So it's been about a week now. Well, in fact, it is a week since Apple Vision Pro was released. There's been an awful lot of headlines, an awful lot of hyperbole, and I just thought it was about time we had a calm, rational conversation about exactly what went on last Monday. This video isn't going to be about a hard sell. It's not even going to hopefully be particularly Apple fanboy oriented. It's just going to be a discussion with you to engage you, to get your comments, to get your thoughts, and for us all to just breathe and think about quite what went on and what the implications of last Monday were for us. And I guess as good a place to start as any would be the price. There was a lot of raised eyebrows, a lot of gasps at Apple Park last week when the ticket of three and a half thousand dollars was announced. And look, I'm not here to defend that price in any way, shape or form. It is a lot of money. It is a hell of a lot of money. But when you think about the level of investment that Apple have put into this device, and I'm not for a moment saying or feeling sorry for them. They're one of the wealthiest companies, if not the wealthiest company in the world. They can afford the $15 billion plus that apparently it's taken to get Apple Vision Pro to this point. But equally, if you were to look around at other tech, say you've got, say you are that sort of person that's got the kind of money to spend on a disposable item such as Vision Pro. If we say look at a 72 inch OLED panel here in the UK, that can easily run you 3000 pounds. And that's without cameras, that's without AV, that's without audio, that's just for the panel alone. So when you think that that is just a TV, and for three and a half thousand pounds, you're getting something that currently is the cutting edge of AR, the cutting edge of technology in general. I don't think that necessarily represents a bad value for money myself. We kind of get stuck in a, a rut. And that's the thing, we don't like change. No matter how cutting edge we like to think we are, we don't like change. We like to think. We like things to be remain almost in a state of status quo. We've got very used to our laptops, to our iMacs, to our Mac Studio, and of course, to our iPhones and iPads. We take that as the state of the art technology. We take that as what computing should be. But what about if somebody was brave enough to come along and turn that upside down? And I think that's kind of what possibly happened last week. I mean, to some degree, Apple were on a hiding to nothing last week. No matter what they announced, no matter how good the product was, they knew that they wouldn't satisfy everybody. And I suppose that was almost the nature of the beast. Most unlike Apple, they actually released a product that I'm convinced they knew wasn't the finished article, but they wanted to get it out there. Enough time had been spent, and the longer time now that we spent, I don't know, fluffing around, trying to find the perfect solution for everything. It was All it was doing was pushing the can further down the road. At some point, this was going to come out. And by releasing it now, they have put a flag in the sand and they have drawn that line and said, right, this is where we start. Everybody can now start. Developers can start. Everybody can now start building an ecosystem around their thoughts of what the AR future can be. And that was a brave move. Apple like to pride themselves on being perfect. Maybe, maybe in this case, they weren't, but they've got the ball rolling, and that's the important thing. And of course, as I said, there's always going to be people that are looking to badmouth, to shoot it down, to fire anything they can at Apple. But nonetheless, it is now out there, and that surely has got to be a good thing. And you know that something has changed when vocabulary changes. And this last week, do you remember back in the days of lockdown, suddenly we had this term furlough. When this last week, all I've seen people doing or talking about is a dystopian state. Dystopian actually means an imagine, imaginary state of society. I don't think this is imaginary. This is very real. I don't see why everyone is freaking and calling it dystopian. Part of me believes that what's going on here isn't just a result of Apple and Apple's Vision Pro headset. I think it's a reaction to this year. So much has gone on this year. You, you look at the, 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 what's gone on. We've had Midjourney, ChatGPT, Dali. It was only a year ago that I first saw a video about Dali. And in that short six months, suddenly we've gone through this whole AI revolution that people are uncertain about, and in some cases freaking about. There's a lot of headlines about that. And now we're moving into this AR future. And you watch the presentation last week and suddenly you see a future that we're not used to, that we're not certain about. And I think that is what people 
are struggling to comprehend. I came into this year not really being fully abreast with what was about to happen. You may have known, you may have watched some of the other videos on the channel, that I've spent a lot of time with Marcus Kane. Now, not only is he a great renders artist, but he happens to know AR and VR and the technicalities of it inside and out. And I've learned so much. And when I watched that event last week, I actually genuinely became really, really excited. There is a future waiting to happen. Whether it will affect my working life, I don't know. Whether it will affect much of what I do beyond where it currently is, I don't know. I would imagine so. Things are moving at a pace. But the thing is, we cannot afford to be scared. We cannot afford just to say, this is it. There's an analogy I was thinking of when I was getting ready to sit down and record this. And it's like music should be like technology. They should never stand still. The boundaries should never stand still. Like, I love jazz. But if jazz had stayed where it was in the 1920s, we wouldn't have had Coltrane. We wouldn't have had Miles Davis. And so it goes on. You, you've got to push boundaries all the time. And technology is exactly the same. And I think part of what it is, is our brains are not hardwired at the moment to accept what we're seeing. Some of what we saw on the event last week looked like the stuff of mystery and miracle. And that's because we're not comfortable with it yet. The vision of, of the, the technical vision of where we could go with this is ahead of us right now. And that I'm, I'm sure that is what we're fighting about. And look, I'm not brilliant with change. I love tech, but sometimes I like my own little bubble. I like things to be just as I left them. And suddenly somebody's come in and changed everything up. Somebody's come in and moved the goalposts along from where we're used to them being. And that is exciting and scary at the same time. There's been a lot sort of said about the pass-through lens. I only mention the pass-through again. This isn't meant to be a video extolling the virtues of Vision Pro, as opposed to just having a look as where we're at as a society. Now, Mark Zuckerberg last week said that if this is the computing of the future, he didn't want any part of it. He made a big part of saying that drawing obviously attention to the fact that his headset is a sixth, seventh of the price of Apple's and his future is of inclusion and Apple's in vision was of everyone sitting around alone. That's not really the case. Anytime you put this headset on, to some degree, you're going to be alone. But with the AR vision that Apple portrayed last week, they're clearly going for a middle ground. They're clearly going for the areas that we're all going to use the most, such as media consumption, such as watching TV, such as watching movies. Now, of course, at the moment, they're not in a position where a family of four could sit down with goggles on and seriously be expected to pay all that money and sit and watch together. But that day will come. This is as bad as the technology will ever be. It will only get better from here. Remember, this is going to look like a relic in just a few years' time. Your kids are going to look back at this and think, this was as good as it got. That is how it's going to be. It's going to be like looking back to the early days of Nokia's and Blackberries compared to where we are now, even the first iPhones, which is only, what, 2005? And that's how fast things are going to move from here on in. This is as bad as it's going to be, and it's already fantastic. It's already beyond what we can comprehend. So when Mark Zuckerberg was saying that it wasn't the society he wants, take that past three, for instance. Now, look, it's a reprojection. We know it's not the eyes of the wearer that you're seeing. But nonetheless, surely if you're sitting down in a room with somebody, don't forget, the pass through doesn't affect the user at all. It only helps other people that are in the room and only then, even if you're in a pass through mode. So surely if you're sitting there watching some content and you're in a room with somebody else, isn't that what Zuckerberg would want? Isn't that the idea that people can actually see at least an image of you? Surely that's got to be a step in the right direction. I would have thought. Uh, the other thing that really struck me last week that is going to change things forever is image capture. Now, clearly the iPhone and smartphones in general have come along and they've changed the way that we can immediately capture that moment. A, a click of the fingers and it's done. You've always got a camera with you. This is going to be the next level. Now, look, if you are that early adopter, if you are that dad at a party or at a barbecue or a family gathering, if you're that bloke in the corner with Vision Pro on, taking pictures, taking video, sure, you are, <laughs> you are going to look pretty bloody weird. There's no getting away from it. You are going to look strange. But again, I'll come back to the point, point. This is as bad as it's ever going to be. And the brilliant thing about taking images and video in particular 
with a Vision Pro on is that whenever you watch them back, it will take you back in such a lifelike moment to that point in time. But I'm like most of the other reviewers out there. These are just opinions, reasonably, I'd like to think, educated opinions from having spent a lot of time making video and talking to Marcus and to other people about it this year. But from everything we saw, from the demonstrations last week, which were very, very well managed, they were very, very highly scripted, what you could do, couldn't do in perfect conditions. But nonetheless, a couple of the things that came to, uh, through loud and clear were how brilliant the lack of latency was and how real it was. People talked about when a birthday cake, the candles on a birthday cake were blown out, you could almost feel the smoke coming towards you. You could almost feel the breath, feel the air, feel the pebbles under your feet. Now, you imagine taking a picture of your kids when they're three, four, five, and looking back at them in 25 years' time, immediately, emotionally, you'll be taken back into that absolute life living moment. I've lost both my parents, and just imagine... I, I, I've been thinking a lot this week, if I could have just had this headset to have captured them in a living moment, the difference that would make to their legacy to me. Sure, I've got my memories. Sure, I've got great, lovely, brilliant, fond memories. But how much better would it be if I could look back at video footage of seeing them just as they were, remembering the moment? And that's the exciting thing. We are on the edge of something major happening here, and I think we need to embrace it. It's like King Canute. You cannot hold back the tides now. The ship has sailed. AI is here. AI is here. It's a case of embracing it. And we've got the ability, the next generation certainly, but we have got the ability to shape this, to form this, to make it into a useful tool, to make it into something that we want to use and can use every day in a meaningful and emotional way. It doesn't just have to be for watching content. It doesn't just have to be for watching movies or concerts. It can be for that emotive connection with people that you love and people around you. Look, nothing that Apple does is done by chance, they plan so far in ahead that this has been coming for a long time and they will have that ecosystem ready. They will have the next level of where this is gonna go ready now lined up. They're already talking apparently about a cheaper sort of SE version coming by as early as late 2025. This will become something for the masses. This isn't a finished article. This is purely for the diehards right at the moment, for the developers and for those with crazy disposable incomes. But the future is just around the corner and you cannot put your head in the sand and pretend it's not happening. So not only did we get a new platform last week, but we got a new term as well, spatial computing. Tim Cook, in again, a very well and carefully scripted, put together bit of PR, said that this is the first bit of Apple gear that you look through and not at. Now just take that on board just a minute, quite the resonance of what he just said. This is a huge and pivotal moment in tech history. As I say, this is not meant to be a fanboy video for Apple. This is not trying to be just singing the praises of Apple products per se. Hell, I was going to get an M2 MacBook Air this week to review the 15 inch, but there was nothing new about it. There was nothing different about it. Why would I want to waste your time looking at that? It's the same M2 MacBook Air I've got my script on from last year, just with a bigger screen. But what we did see with Vision Pro was a vision of the future. And I know that we struggle with change sometimes. I know it can appear scary. I know we've had Midjourney, Dali, ChatGPT, everything thrown at us this year. And now on top of all that, suddenly we get this new idea of how we could work desk-free, standing out with screens all around us. It is the stuff of sci-fi. But last Monday, the future happened. And I think it's a case of needing to be a part of that future and form it, embrace it, get with it, actually enjoy what's going on around us. And don't be too concerned about the hyperbole and the naysayers, there's always going to be somebody trying to shoot things down. I was never trying to make this into a tech-based video. What I wanted to talk to you about was more the emotion of where we are at. I don't know if anyone's really covered that, but this is a, it could be a brilliant moment in our history. And I'm not overstating that this could be pivotal. I'm not saying Apple are going to be the, the sole people in the game. Clearly they won't be. There will be others that come along. But what Apple had the financial clout to do was to start the ball rolling. And they did that magnificently last week. They gave us the platform on which we can now build. Between now and we're expecting next March, developers will be going crazy trying to get this whole ecosystem built and it's only going to get better. But if I had to say to you one thing, just think about that way that you can stay in touch with your kids as they grow up, either through video calls, but certainly through memories and the memories of people that you may have lost. Just imagine if you could have 10 minutes wearing this headset to capture video of people that you love, that you've lost. Then you tell me that last Monday wasn't a magical, a marvellous moment in our, in our history. I'd really like to hear what you have to say. I didn't think I'd feel so emotional and so strongly emotional about this as to sit down and just make a straight uncut video with my thoughts on where we're currently at. And what are my thoughts worth? Not a lot. I know that. I happen to make some videos. I happen to have covered 
the, the development of this through the course of the year. And I'm really excited with where it could go. What I wouldn't give for 10 minutes with my mum and dad, it's priceless. And I think we are now at a position where we can form the future. The future started last Monday. This is ground zero. It's up to us what we make it. That's, that's my video. I've got nothing else to bring you. I've got no fancy B-roll particularly. There might be the odd image thrown in through the edit. I'm not sure yet, but I just wanted to talk to you and start a rational, reasonable conversation about what we saw last week and about how important and how pivotal that could be. That's the video. I'll see you on the next one.